and welcome. Today we're talking about emotions and our feelings and our hearts, all that ooey gooey stuff. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. This is um, a little live to hop on here and start talking to you about the different elements of the HEAR retreat, H-E-A-R. That is the retreat that is starting on July 12th. And throughout the HEAR retreat, we cover very many topics that are connected and related to your journey as a parent within audiology, related to your child's um, journey and what's been going on for them, either recently or for a long time, no matter where you are on this journey, the HEAR retreat is here as support for you, a parent, to be able to confidently come into this space and this role of the parent and be a really, really confident advocate, knowing what you want to say and when and to who. And also, what are the places where you can learn the things that you need? And being able to do that in a space where you're connecting with other families, other parents from around the world, going through the same thing as you, that is what happens during the HEAR retreat. It really is very special and powerful, and I hope you'll sign up and join. So if you're not already, there's going to be a link here in the comments. There's a link at allaboutaudiology.com slash retreat for you to join us. So today, well, last week, actually, last week we spoke about the history and how looking back into the past and what's been going on and what has happened, either, again, recently or in the far past, really does continue to have an impact on your day-to-day -day and your relationship with your child and your future, right? So we talked a lot about history. You can go and watch the other live as well. And so today we're going to the second letter, not history, but emotion. And next week we'll talk about advocacy and then reconnecting the four elements of the HERE retreat. So our emotions, ah, feelings, let's, let's just kind of take a deep breath right there and know that we aren't always given or taught the tools and the way to handle our feelings, to navigate our own emotions to even name them, to even acknowledge them. These are, you know, a big part of what happens in our life. Huge part of actually what happens is how we react to what has happened and how we process what is going on. It's almost like there's two, two circles. There's like the thing, the event, the issue, the problem, the obstacle, whatever it is you want to call the thing. And then how you feel about it. And then how you feel about how you feel about it. It's like the second extra layer that we, we have emotions. And then we also have kind of feelings and judgments and, and attitudes towards our own emotions. And that second layer, that's something that we can really uh, observe and start to over time, um, change or adapt, you know, not necessarily because it's not good and we want it to change and go away, but something that we can watch and have some element of control over. And maybe control is a hard, harsh word. Maybe the other, you know, back to um, observing it, being aware of it, attuned to it is kind of more the goal rather than control. But, you know, just for the, uh, for the sake of our conversation here. So when it comes to our emotions, Think for a second, really take a moment. If you're, if you're with me here on the live or you're watching this later on, take a, take a quick breath. Just like really feel your seat in your chair. I know we're always doing a lot of things at once. We're like watching lives while we're cooking, while someone's calling for us, while, you know. So really just take a moment at any time in your life. You always have this available to you. And think about what are you feeling? Right now, what are you feeling? What's going through your body? What's going through your mind? How often do we ask ourselves, and seriously, how am I feeling? Sometimes we ask each other, how are you? What's going on? How are you doing? Kind of these base questions of like, you know, you with us? You're surviving? Like, when do we really ask each other or other people, how are you feeling? But even more so, when do we ask ourselves? If we take that moment and really sit with this question of what am I feeling today, right now, that's a good place to start. That's the exercise I'm offering to you. 
to take a paper and a pen if that's your way to go to process through writing or really just to sit with your thoughts while you're looking out the window, looking at the stars, looking at the clouds, wherever you are. That's one option, another option. And and maybe even some for some people talking about it is the way that, that it's easy. And talking, not necessarily to someone else, talking out loud, talking to your camera, taking yourself a, a vlog, you know, a video uh, diary. Like sometimes that's a way for you to get in touch with yourself, writing, speaking, maybe dancing, maybe you need to move. Like do whatever it is you need to do to start cultivating a practice, continue a practice of contacting yourself and being in tune with what am I actually feeling? And it's not an easy thing. Like this is not an easy process. (laughs) It's actually incredibly challenging to stay present and stay focused on this question because also you'll start to see that you feel a lot of things at once even conflicting things, even completely opposite things. You can be happy and sad. You can be angry and forgiving. You can be empathetic and judgmental. Ooh, all at once towards the same person at the same time. And that's the beauty of life and the waves and the, you know, all the fun stuff that's called humanity. It is all mixed in, but starting to notice it and observe it and accept it without judgment, without trying to change it, is really an incredible first thing to do. So why is this audiologist on here talking to you about feelings and emotions and observing our thoughts? Well, because I think it's really a big part of what goes on, a really a big part of the journey of parenting, specifically parenting a child who is deaf or hard of hearing or has any other reason to require a lot of medical appointments, medical attention, um, help with school, you know, anything that is more challenging, more time, more, um, you know, effort, more questions, more unknowns than you might have had otherwise without this. It's even more important that you have a practice that's for yourself, that's your you know, I don't like this buzzword self-care, like, you know, self-care, go take a bubble bath and then you'll feel better. It's not about that kind of self-care. It's about truly seeing yourself and your journey and your experience and your emotions as valid, valuable, important, you know, not to the side, not, okay, I'm nothing and I have to do everything for my kid or I, my needs are over there and I have to focus on this. And sometimes we do that. Yeah, that is parenting. I mean, parenthood, having responsibility to care for and raise a child does mean that at times your needs come second or 85th. Yes, indeed, that is true. Oh my goodness, I see that Summer um, tells us that writing has been really helpful for you. Summer, that's amazing. I I agree. I have journals and journals full. That is my my go too. And and on, on that note, I feel like my favorite thing about it is that nobody ever needs to see it, not even me. Like, I'm not also reading back old journals. Sometimes I do. If there's a specific thing I'm looking for, maybe I will. But it's it's really about the act of it itself, not to create something. Like, it's not the kind of writing where I write and then want someone to read it or write to make a point or, you know, write communication writing, like emailing and posts and things. It's a very specific, like, just let out what's happening in my brain and, and be super present with what's writing. It makes me have to slow down. Actually, I just experienced that this second. Maybe you noticed that I was like talking too fast for my thoughts. <laughs> so writing helps me get into that more slow down, more focused uh, way of being where I can only think one thought at a time as I'm writing. <laughs> And then like, it, it's, it helps with that jumbledness where like you're trying to say everything at once or think everything at once. It really helps me as well. So I'm glad that that, that, that helps you summer as well. So yes, right. We're talking about our needs and, and the way that we are, we are parents who do have to put our needs aside or delayed for a bit. And that's also life. And we want to teach about not instant gratification. And so we have to practice that hard pill to swallow. I mean, not always going to get what we want, but about this self-care, a true, true self-care to your core of what you actually need. What you actually need is to be seen and heard and validated 
And sometimes you are doing that for yourself. You are making a commitment to see yourself and hear yourself and witness what you are experiencing. So that's, I think, the power of the peer group, the power of the community here in the Facebook group um, in All About Audiology and over throughout the HEAR retreat where we can do this, model this for one another, this listening and um, you know, listening not to give advice, listening to listen and, and have the other person know that their story matters, that their story was heard. And yeah, it's, it's really super powerful. It's really, really important. In the times of my life that I've experienced, really, really being witnessed with no judgment, it has been some of the most significant turning points in my development, in my life, my growth journey. And so let's talk more about emotions for a bit. Um, when one of the exercises that we do throughout the, the HEAR retreat, we'll do this together, but I'll give you a little uh, sneak peek glimpse, is to think back on that moment, that first moment where you realize that things were going to be different than you expected. For some people, this happened at a newborn hearing screening. For some people, it happened at an audiologist's office at various ages of what the power of their child was. And for others, it came together with other um, events or diagnoses that were being presented, you know, babies in the NICU or, you know, other genetic things or whatever that moment was. Maybe it was in a doctor's office. Maybe it was when you, you called your child and they didn't respond or they didn't hear a loud sound or, you know, I'm, whatever that is for you, you know what happened. And that was the moment that for you, you realized something was different. Perhaps you felt that something was wrong. Something wasn't the way you expected. And I want you to really think about that moment and go back there and not be afraid that you can't handle it because in fact, you did handle it. You got through it and you're here listening to this now. That means that all the experiences, the emotions and the tidal wave of thoughts and the storm that came after perhaps or came then, you, you did manage. You did swim through it and here you are. And sometimes going back to it from the perspective of some distance, some, some time, gives you an ability to actually go and observe and see and, and reprocess, experience it again, but in a way that you are now wiser. You know what came next. You know what challenges presented themselves. But it's an interesting and very powerful visualization. And you might want to do this again in writing and thinking, maybe sometimes even right before you go to bed, if you want to make an intention of what you're going to think about. And, and that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to dream about this. But like right before you go to bed, maybe give yourself this warm, intentional space as you're drifting off to sleep to see yourself at that moment. And many times you're, I hear from a lot of parents, a lot of parents tell me their thoughts are about their child. Natural. Okay. So valid. So hundred percent. Cool. <laughs> like you're a great parent. If when that happened, when that moment came, you're like, what does this mean for my child? How will they develop? How will they make friends? Will they be bullied? Was it this? Like all the questions we have about our child. And go and see if you can do some of that for yourself. Like, I don't want to say worry about yourself, but I do, you know, see what are the worries? What were the concerns that you had for yourself and for who you would be as a future parent, you know, as the parent in the future, as this would go on and give a lot of space and attention to those feelings. Let them be true. Also allow yourself to see them and, and take a step outside of being the, the parent role that has to, you know, go, 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 or action or whatever, and make some space for seeing how did you feel about it? And there's no right or wrong way to feel anything. We feel what we feel, right? Can we do that for ourselves? Can we have one beautiful collective deep breath of compassion, understanding, 
and and allowing ourselves and allowing each other in doing that to say this was hard that was that was a lot that was a lot to take in and maybe you couldn't take it in at the time maybe you did maybe you didn't okay we can always go back in our minds and do that for ourselves give ourselves what we needed so that's a little bit about the <laughs> emotions and the here at retreat we'll do a lot more about this we do we go into like being able to identify and name different emotions using a, a emotions wheel we'll talk about that more on the day i'm just so looking forward to doing this and doing this kind of work deeply and together with you we also have breakout rooms so you can meet one another we meet on zoom for one hour a day uh starting on july 12th we're going to be throughout that week and then the following week so over seven days and it's it's really an intense and empowering you know I, I i feel that for myself it's something i need to do need to connect with you and need to make this space because i found such a lack of of this kind of perspective within the audiology space so i hope that if this is what you're looking for that you have found it and if you have a friend or someone in your in your network in your group and your maybe support or or friend of your you know a family that you know them from this journey please invite them welcome them to do this with you and, and don't um don't feel like you're doing this alone because you know if you bring in someone you know already you've got a good peer network going on and the exciting thing is we can do this with people from all over the world we have people signed up from the us from the uk from what was the last one someone came in i believe from pakistan um so you know we have like it's open. You're all, wherever you are in the world, you can make these connections, even if you live somewhere where there aren't that many uh, other deaf and hard of hearing kids and families. So that is um, today's talk, a little bit about emotions from the Here Retreat. Let me know what your biggest takeaways were, and I really look forward to seeing you in the Facebook group, All About Audiology Podcast, at the Here Retreat starting on July 12th, and on Instagram, where I hang out pretty much all the time. So let's be in touch. If you have any questions, do not really, really do not hesitate to reach out and let's catch up. Let's meet each other and get to know one another and make it awesome. I'm Dr. Lila Saperstein. I'll see you soon. Bye.